In this video, I will be discussing on OSI model. OSI is nothing but an open system interconnection. This model was introduced by one of the standard known as ISO. ISO is known as International Organization for Standardization. Please keep one point in mind. OSI is a reference model. Okay, normally this model we can't use for communication reference. Actually, there is one, one more model known as TCP slash IP model that is derived from this OSI model where exactly we are using the procedures to data communication. So this OSI is just meant for reference. Okay. Normally, this OSI model consists of seven layers as I shown. That is, if I come from bottom up approach, there is a physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. The top three layers, we normally call it as user interface layers because those three layers are under our control. So we are using the application. We are responsible to present the data. Means, for example, if you are using WhatsApp, so you only typing the data in some form, maybe in the form of text, maybe in the form of emails, anything else. So, And at what time? you are sending the data. So that is also timestamp is recorded. So normally these three layers we can touch and feel. So we are calling it as user interface layers and the remaining layers we can call it as a network interface layers. Okay. And here, what are all the data you have given in the application layer? So the data needs to be divided into fragments at the transport layer. So what I mean to say, the first division of your data, till here the data will be in the form of data only, means your original information. So when it comes to the transport layer, this data, whatever is there, should be divided it into smaller pieces, or we can call it as a fragments. So those fragments, we are calling it as a segments in transport layer. Each piece or each uh, uh, fragment, we call it as a segment. And in the transport layer, you are going to check what is known as port number, or you, uh, you can say port address is assigned to identify the respective protocol. So that is done in transport layer. So here port address is checked. So as we already know that the size of the port address is 16 bits. So there may be Two power 16 user defined port numbers means that ranges from 0 to 65,535 port numbers you can use. Okay. Or if you are using any standard port numbers like HTTP, you can use the port number 80. Or if you are using HTTPS port number 443 or FTP port number 21, like that, all those protocol communication will be done in the transport layer. So when it comes to the network layer, these segments are still divided into smaller pieces or smaller fragments. We call it as packets. We name those fragments as packets in the network layer. And in the network layer, we are going to check what is known as IP address. Already I told you there are two versions of IP addresses. One is known as IPv4. The other one is known as IPv6. IPv4 will be of 32 bits and the IPv6 will be of 128 bits. Okay. And when it comes to the data link layer, these packets are still divided into smaller fragments. We call it as a frames. Okay. We call it as frames. And in the data link layer, we are checking one more address known as MAC address. The MAC address is also known as physical address or we can also call it as ethernet address link address uh, anything else so normally we are using physical address the name so it will be of 48 bits 
okay so when this frames comes to the physical layer they are divided into still smaller pieces that is the minor bits or minor pieces we call it as a bits that is in the form of zeros and ones and then the data is transmitted to the uh, next intermediate node so at the receiver side the communication will be in a reverse order means first uh, uh, physical layer the data will enter in the form of bits then in the data link layer those bits are converted back into frames and back address is checked then it goes to the network layer there it is going to uh, check the ip address and uh, the frames are converted back into packets if the ip address is not matched means if it is not the destination node then immediately uh, the protocol will stop the process and then it will go to the next intermediate node like that it reaches to the destination at the destination side the ip address is matched then it goes to the upper layers known as transport layer here it will check the protocol or port number along with that <clears throat> some error control is done and then it goes to the session layer it will record the time at what time it has sent and what what time it has received then it goes to the presentation layer so at the presentation layer sender side encryption is done using example uh, at the sender side if it has used the rsa algorithm then at the receiver side also it should use the same rsa algorithm to decrypt the data and finally the decrypted data reaches to the application layer of the receiver so in this way uh, the flow of data takes place in the osi model and remember in every layer an header is added for example in the transport layer there will be a header along with the data so header will contain the source and destination address and data will contain the original information similarly when it comes to the network layer so network layer will have its own header and then data so the moment when it comes to the data link layer along with the header and information there will be one more field known as trailer that trailer is responsible for error checking and correction if needed so this is what uh, the whole overview of uh, osi model so coming to the functionalities of each layer we will see a layer by layer so first one is the physical layer as i told the physical layer the data will be in the form of bits you can see here so it is receiving data from the data link layer so here the data will be in the form of frames so those frames are entered into the physical layer that is converted into bits and then the data is sent to uh, some transmission media either connection oriented or connectionless oriented and at the receiver side again that header is removed that is what we need this is just a parity bits we need not want at the receiver side it is removed and the remaining data is sent to the higher layer so those bits are converted back into frames this is at sender side this is at receiver side okay so what are the main functionalities of uh, physical layer now as i already told you these are all few functionalities uh, it is responsible for physical characteristics of interfaces and media means it needs to identify uh, what type of media it needs to choose whether it is a uh, coaxial cable fiber optic cable or optical fiber cable or whether it is connectionless all those things and the representation of bits so in how what type of uh, encoding technique it is to use it is single phase five phase polar man sister all those things and the data rate at what speed the data need to be transferred it needs to decide and it is responsible for synchronization of bits and it is also responsible for line configuration so in the upcoming videos uh, i will tell you what are these line configurations and what type of topology that we need to connect whether it is a bus like structure or uh, ring topology or star topology or hybrid topology so what is needed accordingly it needs to choose and lastly what type of uh, transmission modes it needs to identify whether it is a simplex mode or it is half duplex mode or full duplex mode so all those uh, functionalities uh, will be taken care by physical layer so coming to data link layer as i already told you in the data link layer the data is received from the network layer from network layer the data will come in terms of packets okay when it comes to the uh, data link layer those packets are converted into frames as i already told you frame will contain three blocks one is the header data and trailer which is responsible for error control and other things and and it sends to the physical layer 
and the reverse process will happen at the receiver side, sender side, receiver side. And the receiver side, from the physical layer, bits are taken in, in the form of frames at the data link layer, and it sends to packets to the network layer. Okay, let's see what are all the functionalities. <coughs> so the few of the functionalities are, it is responsible uh, to make the data in terms of frames, as I already told you. It is responsible to identify the physical address, or I can say MAC address, which is 48 bit. The most important functionality is it is responsible for flow control and error control and also access control. Please keep one point in mind. This data link layer is divided into two more sub layers. One is known as LLC. The other one is known as MAC. LLC is known as a logical link controller. And MAC is known as media access controller. So this access control is taken care by this MAC and the flow and error control is taken care by this LLC. So in this way, these two sub layers will help in uh, controlling the flow of data as well as controlling the access media. So coming to network layer. So the network layer is mainly responsible for uh, delivery of individual packets from source to destination. Okay. So here you can see in the network layer, it is receiving data from the transport layer uh, where the data will be in the form of segments. And when it comes to the uh, network layer, the data is converted into packets and it is sending to the data link layer for further process. Reverse process is taking place here. So the, what are the main functionalities? So the two main functionalities of uh, data link layer is it helps in logical addressing, nothing but IP addressing. So as I already told you, the main functionality of network layer is to check the IP address, whether it is it may be an IPv4 or it may be a IPv6. In the upcoming videos, I let you know uh, in depth on what is an IP address, types of classes of IP addresses, what is subnetting, all those. <coughs> so the main one more functionality of network layer is routing. So it is responsible for uh, finding the shortest path. So in the upcoming videos, we will see what are all the shortest algorithms we have and more explanation on it. So coming to transport layer, as we already know, the transport layer is responsible for process to process communication. Uh, this transport layer receives data from the session layer. So the first division of data takes place in the transport layer in the form of segments, as I told you. And each uh, segment will go to the network layer where further process is taken place and reverse process will happen at the receiver side. So the main functionality of this uh, transport layer is, as I already told you, service port addressing. That is what we call as port address. Port communication is done here. And also it is responsible for segmentation and reassembly. Uh, because the first division takes place at the sender side and uh, uh, reassembly should be taken at the receiver side. And it is also helps in minor flow and error control and it is responsible for connection control also. So coming to session layer and this session layer and uh, presentation layer and application layer, all these three are user interface layers. So from the session layer, it receives the data from the presentation layer, means the user has to present it and it needs to send to the session layer and it will just record the time and it sends the data to the transport layer for further process and reverse process will happen here at receiver side. So the main functionality is <coughs> dialog control means at what uh, time the data is sent and receiver side at what time it needs to be received and whether the synchronization is happening or not. All those things is taken care by session layer. And the last one is the presentation layer. So the presentation layer is responsible for translation of data, compression of data, as well as encryption of data. So it also takes care of syntax, semantics, because everything it needs to take care, because here only you are presenting the data. So in what way you are presenting matters. So, uh, so the main functionality is it helps in translation. At sender side, it is responsible for encryption, and at the receiver side, it is responsible for decryption. And uh, at the sender side, if you want to can compress the data at the receiver side, it will decompress the data. And the last one is application layer. So here the functionality is what? N number of services provided by the 
<coughs> network. So each service is a application. For example, the user can send a file using FTP protocol. He can send an email using SMTP protocol. He can send uh, a text using HTTP. Like that, n number of uh, services are available. So the user can utilize all those. <coughs> so these are all few applications of uh, functionalities of application layer. That is a network virtual terminal, means uh, he can log into the remote uh, uh, terminal and he can do the work using Telnet and SSH protocols. He can transfer the file using FTP. File management can be done. He can send uh, emails using SMTP protocol and with the help of POP and uh, uh, IMAP protocols he can send and some direct services he can work it out. So this is the brief summary of the entire OSA model as uh, I told in the video. Uh, here it is clearly given physical data link network transport session presentation application. So main thing you should note down physical layer helps in transmitting the bits. Data link layer helps in identifying the MAC address and also flow and error control. Network layer helps in identifying the IP address and helps in finding the path means routing. Transport layer uh, helps in connection establishment as well as port address checking. Session layer helps in dialogue control. Presentation helps in translation, compression, and uh, encryption of data. And lastly, application layer will uh, allow access to the network resources, all types of services. So hope so you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.